Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum invites you to enjoy life. Life with Luigi, a comedy show created by Cy Howard and starring that celebrated actor, Mr. J. Carroll Nash, with Alan Reed as Pasquale. As you know, Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum is giving daily enjoyment to millions of people all over America, in offices and factories, on farms and branches, in mines and oil fields. Folks find that chewing Wrigley's Spearmint helps them feel better and work better. The makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Gum are glad that their product is proving helpful and enjoyable to so many people, and they're glad, too, that they're able to bring you Life with Luigi, because they know it's the kind of a radio program that millions of you enjoy. And now let's read Luigi's letter as he writes about his adventures in America to his Mama Basco in Italy. Dear Mamma Mia, last week I wrote you that I'm going to have my tonsils taken out. Well, that's what's happening to me right now. And I'm writing this letter to you straight from the hospital. It's a funny thing, Mamma Mia. In Italy... My tonsils was a fit to me perfect, but in America, they're wrong size. <laughs> but anyway, they're going to come out. And you're going to be very happy to know that a Pasquale was a put up of money for me to pay for the best doctor in a hospital in a Chicago. So I'm fine. Right now, I'm in a little white room, white bed with white sheets, and I'm even aware a long way tonight the gown. <laughs> anyway, I'm in a bed here, and I was a little nervous to be in a hospital, so someone started to read the newspaper. It was all about the murders, the killings, the shootings, the drowning accidents, and the bombs. Before I was start to have a pity for myself, but now I'm a found out I'm a better off in a hospital. <laughs> I'm a read this paper four times, and, and I'm not too worried, because lately... Nobody has got killed from a tonsil operation. Mamma mia, from your letter, I can see you. You was afraid about me. But don't worry. Everybody's very nice here. Oh, yes. was a little boy. They just put him in the next room. So while I'm okay to walk around, I think I'm going in to visit him right now. Hello, little boy. I'm not a little boy. <laughs> All right, then a bigger boy. My name is Luigi. What's your name? Richard. Oh, Richard. That's a nice name. Big boy's a name, all right. Uh, are they going to take out your tonsils too, Richard? No, I had them out when I was two years old. Oh. What are they going to take out now? My appendix. Oh, oh that's so good. Then you're going to be able to breathe better. <laughs> This appendix is uh, is a hurt to you bad? And they put an ice bag on it. Good. That's it to keep the appendix nice and fresh. <laughs> You're not uh, not afraid of the operation, huh, Richard? Well, I'm not afraid of anything. My mummy and daddy are going to be here with me. That's the way to talk. Don't be afraid of nothing. Not enough. They take your tonsils out. <laughs> Was. Yeah, tonsils. It was a little girl, a robin down the hall. She was uh, having tonsils taken out of two. And she was feeling fine. <laughs> Mr. Basco, you mustn't be visiting all the time. Come on back. I've got to get some information. All right. Goodbye, Richard. I see you later. Take care of yourself and don't forget to change the ice in the bag. Good morning, Mr. Luigi. Mr. Basco, before your operation, Dr. Rubin wants me to take down your history. Take my history? Yes. Well, that's a sound of funny to me, but all right. You want to start the word of Columbus? <laughs> your medical history is what we want. Are you allergic to ether, stimulants, narcotics, or barbiturates? Huh? <laughs> I said, are you allergic to ether, stimulants, narcotics, or barbiturates? Please. Uh, I'm going to understand English too much, but you ain't even speaking that. <laughs> All I'm trying to get at is, does gas have a bad effect on you? No. Only when the company sends me too big a bill. <laughs> <laughs> is, um, is this your first operation, Mr. Basco? Yeah, that's right. I see. Well, we'll check your childhood diseases. Have you ever had pneumonia, diphtheria, measles? 
I'm a head of measles. That's all. Mm-hmm. Scarlet fever? Mm. Did you ever have scarlet fever, Mr. Basco? Well, I'm a once I had a fever, nurse, but I'm a don't remember the color. I think I'd better let Dr. Rubin... Oh, yes. Uh, unless you prefer it otherwise, we give you a local anesthetic. Local anesthetic? What's that? That's to put you to sleep. Well, if you're going to put me to sleep, I'm likely to go fast. Yes? So please, instead of local, maybe you give me the express. <laughs> well, we'll see. Anyway, it's visiting time now, so I'll leave you for a while. It's a visit in an hour. I wonder if anybody's going to come... There's a lot of people are coming. I'm a glad little boy, Richard, has got his mother and a father. Luigi, my fellow boo. Oh, oh. <laughs> hello, Schuster. I'm so glad to see you. I'm, I'm going to so rise. Uh, not only did I come, but look. Come on in, gang. Hello, Luigi. Hello, Luigi. Luigi, how do you do? Olsen, and where's the Miss Spalding? Hello, Mr. Basco. Hello, Mrs. Spalding. That's enough. You can go now, Miss Spalding. Luigi will die in peace. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we might bring you a little school right here in the hospital. Oh, that's very nice of you, Miss Bother. You got, you got no idea how good it's to make them feel. Here, Luigi, Schultz and me, we chipped in and we brought you a box of gas. Oh. Yeah, yeah. One whiff and you won't need the ether. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll come, come in very handy when you hand them out later, you know. Everybody's going to ask you, was it a boy or a girl? And you'll say, neither. It was a dancer. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Harrow, and Schultz. And Luigi, me and Miss Balding. We have brought you a chef. Chef? Oh. Well, uh, thank you, Austin, and thank you, Miss Balding. I... I know I miss you, but you... you, class... You miss me, Lilla? Oh, yes, Mr. Basco, very much. Without you, Luigi, the class ain't the same. Ah, yeah, last night even I was different. A different? <laughs> yeah, you should have been there, Luigi. I answered so many questions right. My intelligence got obnoxious. Right, Luigi, smile. It happened that it was uh, Lincoln's birthday. So we studied all about Lincoln. What a coincidence. In my judgment, Luigi, Abraham Lincoln... Mr. Olsen, it really doesn't matter Mr. about... Mr. Olsen, I was merely trying to tell Luigi that, in my opinion, Lincoln was the greatest American that ever lived. You think. Lincoln was born in a log cabin, poor and with no influence. He became a rail splitter, a storekeeper, a surveyor, a lawyer, and then he became president. Those employment agencies certainly gave wonderful service. <laughs> I think we've heard enough now, Olsen. After all, we came here to talk about Luigi. When are your tonsils being taken out, Mr. Bassett? You don't mind, I'm rather talk about the Lincoln. <laughs> Your uh, the greatest thing Lincoln ever did. Give he somebody ho- else a chance, will you? You would think they fought the Civil War, especially for Olsen. <laughs> Personally, I think Lincoln's greatest achievement was to free the slaves. That Emancipation Proclamation. January 1st, 1863. <laughs> a mind like a steel trap. Can't let go. <laughs> Miss Bolling, that was a speech where Mr. Lincoln is afraid the slaves, huh? Yes, that's right, Mr. Basco. I'm glad you recognize that very important document. Ah, that emancipation was great, but for sheer genius, give me the Gettysburg Address. November 19th, 1863. <laughs> Who asked you? Olsen, we don't go to school just to know what the dates are. Some of us like to know what it was that happened. It so happens I know very well what happened. I can recite the Gettysburg Address by heart. That wouldn't be necessary. Last night in class was enough. And he did it very well, too. <coughs> Stand back, everybody. It's coming out again. <laughs> Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth upon this continent a new nation, conceived in liberty, and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. How can a man be so right and sound so wrong? <laughs> oh, Mr. Olsen, that was very good. How do you feel now, Mr. Basco? I'm, I'm feeling wonderful. Friends, you don't know how good you make me feel by coming here today. Now, now maybe somebody's like to play a little chess or something. Sorry, folks. Visiting time is up. Well, oh, 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 the time is a flight too fast. Sorry. Sorry. Well, goodbye, Luigi. Well, well, take care. Well, goodbye, well, friends. And Miss Balding, Hollywood, Sultan, and Schultz. Thank you for coming. And... Nice. Uh, maybe 
You stuck a few minutes to hear, huh? Oh, sorry, Mr. Basco. I've got to get the little boy ready. The little boy. Oh, wait, wait. I'm going to go with you. But... No, no, don't stop me. I'm going to put the bathroom on. I'm go. Well, young man, we're ready for you. Huh? I'll be back in a minute with the table to take you upstairs. Upstairs? Now, don't get frightened. Isn't that the frightener? How do you get you this? Mr. Luigi, I, I feel terrible. No, don't talk like that, Richard. You big boy, you said yourself, you big boy. How old are you? Seven. Oh, you should have bigger mustache and a lot of beard than a face, you know. No, no, wait, 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 don't excite it. Look, Richie, I go bring you my present. I got a wonderful cigars. I'm going to give them to you. I don't want cigars. All right, then. you don't have to smoke them. Listen, Ricky, you know what you do, Richie? You take all the cigars out of the box, and you build a little house, and the little gold bands you put on your fingers are for the rings. <laughs> then you're going to have enough rings to get married the 50 times. I don't want to get married. All right, you don't. I'm a feeling the same way myself. How do you like the chest set? What's a chest set? That's a funny I don't know myself. <laughs> Oh, no, no, please, please, Richie, please, don't cry. I'm a feeling terrible if you cry. Wait a little, here, look, look. I'm going to make a like a chicken. Cock-a-doodle-doo. 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 a clock a clock That's Italian, a chicken. Now I'm going to make a like a pig. Listen, oh, coink, 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 coink. Now listen to the cow. That's a moo. Moo. Sure, everything is a funny. Nothing is a bad. Nothing is going to hurt you. Don't be afraid. A penis operation, that's a nothing. No. Sure, it's a nothing. It's going to be just as easy as your tonsillar operation. Oh! <laughs> yeah, but now what's, what's the matter? That was terrible. <laughs> All right, Miss Hodges. <laughs> Let's get him up on here now. Yeah, don't, don't, don't cry, Richard. You, you big a boy. Good luck. Goodbye, Mr. Luigi. Goodbye. Just for a little while. All right, Mr. Basco. Back to your room. All right. I'll close the window now so the noise won't bother you. Now I'll, um... Put out the light. Good night. Mamma mia, I'm a stand. Before we return to Life with Luigi, we'd like to mention Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum and the daily enjoyment it can give you. You see, Wrigley's Spearmint is a delicious treat you can chew and enjoy right while you're doing other things. The smooth, good chewing goes along with your work, helps relieve pent-up tension, and makes your job seem easier and pleasanter. What's more, the lively, long-lasting flavor of Wrigley's Spearmint freshens your taste and helps sweeten your breath. So enjoy chewing Wrigley's Spearmint Gum while you work, and at other times, too. Get a few packages and always keep some handy. And now let's turn to page two of Luigi Basco's letter to his mother in it. Well, Mamma Mia, soon I'm going to go upstairs and the doctor is going to take him out of my tonsils. I know it's a small operation, but it's a funny thing. I'm, I'm a feeling nervous. I know how, I don't know how to explain it, but, uh, but remember when I was a little boy and Uncle Pietro is sharpening up his scissors to give me my first haircut? I remember how I'm a kid, I'm a screamed and the three people was a holding me down. Then after the haircut, I was a fine. 
But Uncle Pietro, he's a go away for two weeks of vacation. <laughs> well, there was a brought the little boy Richard down a few hours ago, so I'm a winning the same. Well, Richard, you look a fine. Your pennies are don't hurt no more, huh? No, I just feel the stitches. The stitches? Are you thinking I'm going to stop in my tonsils? <laughs> That's funny. Uh, yeah, it's so funny. Well, well, you see, it wasn't no use it to cry anyway, huh? You, you feel it fine now, huh? Yeah. I felt real good when I came out of the ether. My parents were by my bed. Oh. Your parents said uh, there was a by your bed, huh? Yes. The nurse said they shouldn't be there, but they didn't listen to her. Boy, was I glad. Yeah, that's a nice. Uh, <laughs> what are the... Oh, by the chit, I'm, I, I see you again, huh? Bye. Oh, Mr. Basco, I meant to tell you, some visitors are waiting for you in your room. Oh, man. That's oh, a wonderful... I wonder who's it... Who's it... Luigi, uh, my uh, friend! Uh, <laughs> hello, Luigi. Hello, hello. Oh, Pascal, I'm, I'm so glad to see you. You thought uh, maybe I wouldn't have come, my little banana nose? Yeah. <laughs> well, you didn't have to worry about that. Hey, look at what I brought you. Pizza! Hey, so, look at what else. A big plate of hot spaghetti, plenty of bread, and a nice bottle of red wine. <laughs> Luigi, if that operation don't kill you, this food will. <laughs> yeah, but Pascal, you think it's a good for me to eat this now? Sure. You don't want to suddenly get a hungry in the middle of the operation. The doctors have got to stop and send the nurse out to get you a ham and sandwich. <laughs> Go ahead, eat. All right, be sure, Pascal. <laughs> Here, give me that, huh? Hey, nice. So what's the big idea grabbing away the food? Go out and buy your own dinner if you're hungry. <laughs> what's the matter with you? Don't you know he's not allowed to eat a thing before the operation? Nice. I'm not trying to teach you the nice business, but tell me one thing. When you eat the food, it goes to your stomach, right? Of course. And his operation is upstairs by the neck, right? Yes. Well, don't tell me the doctor's going to reach his tonsils by going up through the stomach. <laughs> I'll take this food away, Mr. Basso. And for your own good, don't you dare take a bite of anything. All right, then I see. Hmm. Think she's the big shot. <laughs> if I ever grow any tonsils at this place, say they're getting to my business. <laughs> well, we forget about that. How you feeling, little pumpkin ahead? <laughs> oh, I'm a... I'm a feel all right, Pasquale. A little nervous and... Uh, and... Uh, Lonesome. Sure, I suspected that. And guess what, Luigi? I brought somebody with me. I know you're dying to see. <laughs> Who's that, the Pasquale? My daughter Rosa. <laughs> Ain't you just dying to see her? Yeah, I'm a dying. <laughs> Wait, now I call her in. Rosa, Rosa, Rosa. You called me, Papa. <laughs> Yes, my little Florence Nightingale. <laughs> Just a look on a poor Luigi and that a white hospital bed. Say hello to him. <laughs> she's, she's a laughing and a crying. Oh, you boob. She's a crying. <laughs> yeah, but Pasquale, why she's dressed all in the black? Kind of why she's a crying like this. That's a true love for you, Luigi. You ain't dead yet already. She's a crying for you like she was a widow. Miss <laughs> <laughs> Friday, please tell the doctor I'm going to go home. All right. You'll have to leave now. We're ready to take you upstairs and give you the ether, Mr. Basco. All right. Come on, Rosa. <laughs> goodbye, Luigi. Let me kiss you goodbye. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> I am sure I had the eight to five minutes ago. <laughs> well, goodbye, Luigi. Be brave and take my advice. So what's that, the Pasquale? When they give you the gas, just breathe it enough to put yourself to sleep, but then stop breathing. Goodbye. No, <laughs> Pasquale, <laughs> better go. Mamma mia. And I'm, and I'm, I'm all alone. Up on this table. Huh? Oh, all right. I, I, I help myself when I summon. All right. I'm, I'm ready. Fine. Oh, 
Come on, sir. Why, why, why are you taking me in Richard's room? He asked me to. He wants to talk to you. Oh. Hello, Mr. Luigi. Hello, Richard. Oh, how do you feel? To tell you the truth, they're not too so good. Well, don't worry. It's nothing. I was frightened, too. Yeah. I, I know. Mr. Luigi, you want your box of cigars? I just use the bands. Oh, that's all right. I'm a too nervous to you smoke them. <laughs> I didn't even touch the chest set. No, no, thanks. No, no, no. I got a whole box of lollipops my Uncle Joe sent me. <laughs> lollipops? Yeah, all flavors. Chocolate, lime, cherry... And butterscotch. Butterscotch. Oh, that's a you wonderful boy. You ever hear a chicken? Cock and all go! And the duck? Quack, 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 quack. We have quack, to go, quack. Richard. Oh. All right. Goodbye, Mr. Luigi. Goodbye, Richard. Hold your hand. Yeah. For good luck. All right, nurse. Yes, Dr. Rubin. Oh, you... You... <laughs> this is the start of the night, Nothing to it, Mr. Basco. Oh, no, I'm... I'm a... P -p -p Positivity, not to me. <laughs> Are you uh, ready with the ether cone? All set. I wait. Yes? You was a set to eat the corner? Yes. What a chance does I'm supposed to get ice cream, McCorn? <laughs> <laughs> well, that comes later. Now, Mr. Baskin, when I say ready, you begin counting slowly. One to a hundred, please. One to a hundred, and the chances are they going to be after? That's right. Uh, apply the ether. All right. Begin counting, Mr. Basco. And then he has the 99 100 away to the tons of the doctor. <laughs> no, 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 Mr. Basco. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Six system in. <laughs> He's practically out. Mamma mia. Mamma mia. Mamma mia. Hold your head still, my son. Uncle Pietro has got to cut off your hair. Hold me, mum. Don't worry. I got to you. Don't worry, Mamma me. I'm big enough for now. I know, Luigi. I know. I'm going to take a good care of myself in America. Goodbye, Luigi. Goodbye, Luigi. Name? Chocolate. What? Address? Cherry. This is ridiculous. What's your name? Lime. What address? What a statue. What a statue. I hear such ridiculous answers. Mamma mia. Mamma mia. Don't let it go. Don't let it go. All right, class. And now I present the President of the United States, Abraham Olsen. Fourteen scores and eleventeen years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent Louis de Basco. Ray for Luigi Lincoln. Yeah, he's going to freeze the tonsils. Hello. Huh? I said hello. Who are you? I'm your tonsil. My tonsil. Sure, I'm stepping out tonight. Goodbye, mister. This is the last time you'll see me. Wait, don't go. Don't leave me alone. Mama. Mama me. Don't leave me alone. Hey, Richard, what are you? Richard, I call you mama and your papa. Huh? What are you? I'm all alone. I'm all alone in the big long white hall. It's so long. So all alone. 
Lon, Lon, I'm no one to be alone. No one to be alone. He's coming out of it. Look at the way he's tossing in his bed. And look at that wild look in his eyes. Himmel, does he look for Schimmel? <laughs> no, he's, he's coming out of it. And he's looking at me. Rosa, go away before he passes out of it. Take it easy, Mr. Basco. Don't try to say anything. Yes, Luigi, take it easy. Huh. We all are here. The nurse told us to wait outside, but we thought it would be better if you woke up and saw us, Luigi. Uh, look. Uh, look at that smile on his face. Uh, uh, He's looking at you, Mr. Olsen. Uh, oh. Oh. Uh, oh. I think he wants something. Uh, huh? Uh, oh. This pencil? Uh, you want to write something? Uh, here's a piece of paper, Mr. Basco. Now, take it uh, easy, me. Here. Let me read it. Oh, Luigi. Read it, Pasquale. It's to say, thank you, my family. It's a five days now since the tonsils that they come out, and I'm feeling fine. <laughs> Mamma mia, is it not just so bad to go to the hospital? It's only bad when, well, when you feel alone. Richard, he's lucky, and, and his parents are not that. And I'm lucky too, Mamma mia. Because with all of my friends, I'm found my little family in America. Yeah. And it's just as it tell me, I'm real American now. Because I'm not going to start off any conversation with a famous American words. Do you want to see my operation? <laughs> <laughs> Say goodbye, Mamma Mia. You love a son, Luigi Basco, a little immigrant. Friends, the makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum hope you've enjoyed tonight's episode of Life with Luigi, and they'd like to remind you that Wrigley's Spearmint Gum is an ideal taste treat to have in your home. Just about everyone enjoys chewing Wrigley's Spearmint, and you can pass it around often because it's wholesome and healthful and doesn't spoil the appetite. Remember, too, chewing aids digestion and helps keep the teeth bright and clean. So when you're making out your shopping list, be sure to include some packages of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. It's inexpensive, and it's a delicious treat that your family and friends will appreciate. The makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum invite you to listen next week at this time when Luigi Basco writes another letter to his Mama Basco in Italy. Life with Luigi is a Cy Howard production and is directed by Mr. Howard. Mac Benoff writes the script with Lou Derman. J. Carol Nash is starred as Luigi Basco with Alan Mead as Pasquale, Jody Gilbert as Rosa, Hans Conrad as Schultz, Mary Ship as Miss Falding, Joe Forte as Horowitz, and Ken Peters as Olsen. Music is under the direction of Love Glaston. Bob Stevenson speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.